So how long would it take you to pay off a $5,000 credit card if you only paid the minimum balance? You've probably already seen the title, so you know that it's 33 years. That's longer than most home loans. Not only that, you would have paid around $17,000 over that term. If we put 5,000 in with a normal interest rate, you'll be paying $17,181 over 33 years. Of course, you pay higher payments, you can pay more. But if you're just paying the minimum balance, it's going to take 33 years. For $10,000, 43 years and $36,000. Wow. And what about $20,000? If you had $20,000 on credit card, you would be paying for 54 years. Pretty much your entire life, you'll be paying that $20,000 credit card balance off. And you would have paid just under $75,000. That's just that's just ridiculous. In this video, I'm going to cover the only time paying the minimum balance is okay how to avoid getting into a debt trap by opening more lines of credit to pay for something else, and of course, how to set up a plan to make paying off your debt a priority. Let's go. So what are the only times that it's acceptable to pay the minimum balance? So we can all agree that paying the minimum balance on your cards is crazy and is going to lead to financial disaster. You're never going to be financially free until you get out of debt. There are only two situations I think that it's acceptable to pay the minimum balance and here they are. The first is if you have more than one debt and you're prioritizing another debt over the credit card or whatever. So you have a plan in place where you're putting the maximum amount that you can on another debt and only paying the minimum on the rest. That's a perfectly acceptable strategy and actually one that I recommend. And then what you would do is when that debt is paid off, you would go and put the maximum on the next debt and pay the minimum on the rest until that debt is paid off and then so on and so on. That's the only time it's acceptable to pay the minimum on a debt if you can afford it. So that's actually a really good strategy as long as you're prioritizing at least one a debt. The second situation that it's okay to pay the minimum is if you're in some sort of emergency and you need to free up cash so that you only have a plan in place for say a month or two to pay the minimum while you free up cash for this other emergency that you've got going on in your life. And then once that thing is over, then you'll go back to paying the maximum on your credit cards again. Now you do need to be careful in this situation because you don't want months to go by where you're only paying the minimum because it is going to extend not only how long it takes you to pay off, but also the amount that you're paying off will increase over time. So this really is only a temporary measure. So it's not only the extra money and the extra time that you need to be mindful of, you also need to be careful that you don't fall into a debt trap. So what is a debt trap? A debt trap is when you get put into a situation where it becomes too difficult to pay off all your debts. And once you're in a debt trap, it can be super difficult to get out of. Now, while single people can get into a debt trap, it more often happens with either couples or families. And older people also can get into a debt trap because they can't easily just go into the workforce to pay off any of their debts. And generally, there are two main risk areas where people can fall into a debt trap. The first is the single or the couple where they both have good jobs, uh, they have more than enough money to pay off any debts that they take out. So they take out credit cards and personal loans for lifestyle things and they're fine while they both have a job, but then something might happen. One of them might get sick or lose their job or just simply life gets in the way and they wanna start a family and all of a sudden they're on a lower income and they can no longer afford to pay all of the debts that they used to pay. And what happens is most people think that this is a temporary situation, that they're gonna get a new job, they're gonna get healthy again, and once they finish the family or whatever, that they'll be able to go back to work. So they think it's only a temporary situation, so they don't really pay attention to the debts and their lifestyle continues as to how it was before they had two incomes. And then all of a sudden it gets out of hand and it snowballed into a much higher debt than they actually realize. The second person who's vulnerable to a debt trap is someone who is living paycheck to paycheck. They're on a low income and they're just struggling with the everyday expenses of life. So they become really vulnerable to those instant cash loans, those payday loans where they can get access to cash really quickly but then they struggle because they don't have the income to back them up to pay off those loans down the track. The older generation is particularly vulnerable to this because they might have health complications that come up. So they need the cash really quickly to pay for these health, uh, maybe surgery or some other procedure. And they're stuck in not being able to pay these 
exorbitant interest rates or really crazy uh, term uh, repayments that they're supposed to make. So what people try and do when they're in this situation is that they're constantly cycling their debts. They're opening up new credit cards to pay off an old debt or new loans to pay off an old debt. And so they're constantly just cycling the debt from one to another and just trying to keep up with all of the repayments that they have. And then they end up with even more debt than they started with. and even more difficulty in paying for everything. They're just trapped in that debt cycle that's nearly impossible to get out of. So do I think consolidating your debt is bad? Look, it, it's complicated. Sometimes this finance can work in your favor, especially if you're transferring into a personal loan with a low interest rate or a zero balance or low balance credit card for a certain amount of time. But you still need to be very careful because if you don't use the cards or the loan how it's intended, you can end up paying more in the long run. They really are only beneficial if you use that grace period to buckle down and pay off the debt in full and don't accumulate any more debt. If you can do this and you can buckle down and pay all of your cards and cancel them once they're paid off, then it can work in your favor. But often what happens is that isn't the case. A lot of these offers, especially with low balance or zero balance credit cards, it can be that they have yearly fees associated with the card. So even though you're not paying any interest on a certain period of time, you're still paying a yearly fee. And often that interest free period or that low interest period only applies to the debt that you're transferring onto the card. It doesn't apply to any new purchases that you make. And then once the grace period is up, often they'll have an even higher interest rate than you had before. Plus they can mess with your credit score if that's something that you care about. Now personal loans can be a little better because the interest rate is usually a lot lower, although there are usually fees associated with certain types of loans and many of them will have penalty fees. Like if you try and pay off the loan faster, which normally would be a good thing, but they might have fees associated that they don't want you to do that. They want you to take out the whole term of the loan. So you really need to look at everything that you're signing and understand what the interest rate is, what the term is, and what you're expected to pay. That goes with any type of loan or credit card or anything in life really, because you don't wanna be in a worse situation than you started from. That's not what we're going for here. So how can you avoid not only the possibility of falling into a debt trap, but just paying off loans and credit cards for the rest of your life? You need a plan. So you wanna be as anti-debt as you can be. And I know what some people are gonna say, they're gonna say that you can use debt to leverage to even better your financial position, and you can like with property or business, but we all know that's not what I'm talking about here. And while most of us know that debt is bad and we are leaning towards a more debt-free lifestyle that has been shown in the statistics, I still think we have a long way to go. I think most people who watch this channel are going to agree with me that if you're using debt to fund your lifestyle, then that is a very risky and expensive strategy. You just can't predict what's going to happen in the future and it's not going to make you financially free. So of course, if you are in debt and you want to get out, then you need a plan to pay it off. And I always think the first step is mindset. So if you've been watching my channel for a while, you know that I'm quite big on mindset because I think that if you can change your thoughts about money, about saving, about investing, that you really can change your future. I'm very anti-debt. I think it just creates way too many problems more than it benefits people. I'm frugal and I put all of my money into income producing assets. So that's how I build wealth is by buying assets, the stock market that gives me back money. Now other income producing assets that you might want to look into is investment property or business. I just prefer the stock market because it's extremely passive. Once I buy a stock, I don't really have to do anything else. They just send me dividends and the, the price usually goes up over time. So now's the time to build your plan. You need to make a list of all of the debts that you currently have. So use a spreadsheet or a journal or just somewhere where you want to record all of the debts that you have. And since you want to pay as much of your income as possible into paying off those debts, you're going to need a budget. Yep, you know I love budgets. I'm a fan of personal budgets where you track your income and expenses and then create a plan based around what you earn and what your expenses are. I track everything. I think it's the only way to really see where your money's going. So when you have a budget, you can lower the expenses that aren't as important to you. You can see where your problem areas are and then you can allocate that money into paying off debt as fast as possible. And it goes without saying, Saying that you want to be anti-debt as well. You do not want to be creating any more debt. You want to get debt out of your life. 
So if you have a problem with credit cards, you might want to switch to a debit card or using cash only. I actually don't like using cash because I just find it really hard to track. I do have a credit card which I use to pay all my expenses, but that's only because I find it really easy to track and I'm paying it off every single week. Every Monday I do my budget, I'll write down everything that I spent, every single thing that I spent, and then I pay off that credit card at the end of the week. So I'm never paying interest. It's just usually a way for me to track what I'm spending. So it's up to you whether you keep your credit card or not. If you have a problem, like I said, switch to either a debit card or cash but if you don't have a problem then you need a plan to be paying it off weekly monthly whenever you get paid if you have more than two credit cards then get rid of the rest and only keep those two I actually really only recommend one but sometimes you might need two if you have a joint account with your partner or your kids or something and for the ones that you don't want to keep once they're paid off ring the bank and cancel them don't try and keep it and say you're just not going to use it you just never know when you're gonna be tempted. You wanna get that card out of your life. If you wanna have a little ritual to get rid of the card, I always find that's fun. A little get rid of the debt out of your life sort of ritual. I do recommend though, do not put your credit card in the microwave and try and melt it. Plastic smells terrible when it's burning but cutting it up is always fun. So debt is awful. If you have it, you're never going to be financially free. You're gonna be connected to the bank the whole time that you have that debt, and you'll probably be connected to some sort of job because you need the income to pay the debt. So the goal is to be as financially free as possible, and debt has no place in that plan. I hope you've enjoyed this video. Take care, and I will see you in the next video. Take care, bye.